What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing well. Happy New Year. All that fun stuff. Uh, today we're going back in the vault some more. You probably noticed I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, I have a lot of stuff on order, and I plan to order more today, but right now I have nothing on the back burner physical-wise uh, that I have not listened to yet. <clears throat> so I should have some new stuff here. Arriving in a week or two, uh, I got noticed today on my email that some stuff's on its way, but with the Postal Service still being backed up with not only coronavirus shit, but um, the holidays, uh, who knows what what's going to arrive when. So, um, In the background, we're listening to Clandestine by Entombed. Try to get that right there. Um, this originally came out in 1991. But this is a uh, repress. This is not an original. This is a gatefold repress that came out in 2014. Um, this is a uh, picture disc, though. I usually don't... I'm usually not a big fan of picture discs. This is the uh, inner sleeve with some lyrics there and a logo. Uh, picture discs, I think I've said this before. Um, the sound quality on picture discs is usually trash. Um, as compared to an actual proper vinyl release. Um, but this one uh, is pretty cool. This shows the... Um, try to get some glare off of here. Maybe this way. I don't know. Uh, but that shows like what the back looks like. And then the front cover art is... Uh, let's do like this right here. Uh, I just think it's cool cover art. And I was kind of... Uh, kind of an impulse buy at a record store. It's um, I had a CD version of this many many years ago when I was getting into death metal uh, who knows what happened to it um, but I was in a record store and I saw it uh, and it was I don't know 25 bucks or something like that which is a little more than I wanted to pay for it but it is considered uh, a classic um, death metal album by many so yeah that's uh, clandestine by entombed great great cover I really like this uh, quite a bit so picked it up good purchase um, so next we're going to get into my CD collection, starting with, um, I'm in the AGs uh, right now, so we're going to be starting with, um, and by the way, if, if you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe and, and all that fun stuff and share this. I'm trying to grow the channel. Uh, a lot of people have subscribed recently, so I do appreciate that. I'm trying to get more active in the uh, metal and music community in, in general on YouTube, so um Happy to talk music with all of you out there. So I do talk about a lot of different kinds of music. So um, from start to finish this video, we're going to run the gamut from hardcore to grindcore to black metal to country music. So uh, if there's something you don't like, check it out below. You might might enjoy it. Um, so this is a hardcore um, band. If you're into hardcore, you know who they are. Agnostic Front. Uh, this is a little different release, though. This came out, I think... I don't remember what year this came out, actually, but this is um, Cause for Alarm and Victim and Pain in one uh, CD. Uh, Victim and Pain came out in 84, and um, Cause for Alarm came out in 86. And it looks like Combat Core, I think this was just Combat Records, Relativity, whatever, um, put out a combo album. These are my two favorite agnostic front albums in one so it was kind of a no-brainer not really much to show you on the inside other than what i just showed you uh, but this has um all my favorites i shouldn't say all my favorites many of my favorites um your mistake uh, the eliminator uh, victim and pain blind justice out for blood united and strong etc etc um it's just it's they're both great albums and having them on one cd uh, is just convenient more than anything um when i get to the ags in my um final collection i i think i have one of these original pressings i'm not sure but we'll get to that some other day so if you don't know hardcore or if you're new to hardcore and you want to get into new york hardcore agnostic front can't go wrong there um, next up we're going to switch gears drastically and we're going to talk um grindcore uh this is um Agora Apocalypse by uh, Agora. And these glare today. Agoraphobic, agoraphobic nosebleed. Um, this is a grindcore band. Um, this album came out in I think 
2009-ish. Um, the cover art's pretty good, as you can see. The, um, the lyrics are all over the place. If you don't know the band, they're kind of... Uh, they have ties to Pig Destroyer uh, to a degree. Um, but this is probably my favorite album of theirs, and I think it's their last full length. They've done a ton of splits uh, over the years. Uh, I don't know why... Uh, they don't put out more out, uh, have more output. Um, I always thought the inside was funny. Um, the saying here, um, you're born, you shit, and you die. <laughs> That's kind of uh, a, f a play on um, the old saying, "You uh, death and taxes are the only two things guaranteed in life. Um, a lot of funny lyrics in here. I mean, dick to mouth resuscitation. Uh, they also have some female vocals, which... And when it comes to grindcore and whatnot, sometimes I'm not a fan of just because um, a lot of female vocalists, their, their scream tends to be a little higher pitched. Um, but in this case, uh, what was her name? I can't remember her name, unfortunately. Cat something, I believe. Give me a minute. Yeah, Cat. I can't remember her last name, but her vocals are excellent on this album. They have a lot of funny um, cartoon type things in this booklet. And, uh, if you're a Grind fan and you have not heard of Gorephobic Nosebleed, I uh, highly recommend them. Uh, if you like Pig Destroyer, you're going to love um, these guys quite a bit. So, a lot more varied than Pig Destroyer, I would say. Um, more tongue-in-cheek lyrics, uh, but still great uh, nonetheless. So, highly recommend you check out um, a Gorephobic Nosebleed. Start with this album and then um, work your way backwards if you like it. Next up, we're switching gears a little bit to, actually a lot of bit, uh, to black metal. Um, this is, uh, I have, what do I have? One, two, I've got three releases, at least in CD form, by this band. Um, Alcest, I think is how you pronounce the band name. Um, this is Les Voyages de la May. I'm not, I don't speak French very well, obviously. Um, but this came out. Uh, in 2012 this is a I don't know if this was a standard package it's like a weird shaped digipack it's uh, it's not a standard size digipack uh, it's hard probably hard to tell on the camera uh, but when I when you put it up against a, a regular CD uh, you can see the size is a little different so um, this is my favorite album by them um, atmospheric some people call it shoegazy black metal um, I don't know. It's just very um, melodic and heavy at the same time. Some of the um, melodies on here just are extremely hummable. Um, if that's, uh, it might sound kind of weird, but uh, for black metal, if you are you want to ease yourself into black metal, you're not really a fan of the croaky vocals, and you want to slowly get into that uh, shallow water of black metal start start with this album um i love the melodies on this it, like i said it's my favorite um album it was a solo project um by the guy named nige 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 um he just couldn't find band members that that got along and or had the same musical vision as him um there's a back this came out on prophecy by the way um and but eventually he found someone i believe a drummer and they've been a two-piece ever since. I think it might may have started before this album. I can't remember, honestly. Um, but yeah, Alcest. This is a, a great, great album. And this is kind of fun for me to go through my collection because some of the shit I forgot how great it was. It sits um, back on that shelf behind my big head. Um, and it just sits there. I don't think about going and pulling it anymore. Uh, just because I don't have to pack up a bunch of CDs when I go on a trip or something. Everything's on Spotify now. Uh, it's kind of depressing for me in a way, but so this is kind of fun to, to go back and listen and explore what I have. Maybe stuff I maybe don't really need to keep anymore. Um, next up is their album. Again, we're still on Alcest. Alcest, and this is Shelter. It came out in 2014. As I mentioned, them being a two-piece, there's the other member. I don't remember his name. I think he's the drummer. Um, Winter, goes by Winter Falter or something like that. Um, this is an actual digipack type layout. Uh, this is, in my opinion, what kind of brought them to the forefront of black metal. 
uh, or an audience anyway. I think they were sort of kind of popular in certain circles, but Shelter, uh, they really started gaining a lot of popularity. I don't know why uh, this particular release, just because it's not their best release in my opinion. It's still solid. Um, they do take time to get into, and, and you need patience, um, even though there's a lot of melody. Some of the, a lot of these songs on these albums are six to nine minutes long, so the, the payoff, it may take you a little bit to get there. This is not pop music, so you're not going to get the, the bubblegum vocals right away, um, or the bubblegum chorus in the first minute and a half. So um, stick with it. I think if you dive into Alcest, uh, you will enjoy uh, the last Alcest CD that I own, this is another weirdly shaped one. Um, this is Kadama. Uh, came out in 2016. This one was a little weird. Um, the packaging is kind of cool. You can see here, this slides out. Uh, it looks like an innocent Asian person on the front, and then it turns out there's some uh, skeletons there. Uh, this is another oddly shaped one with the slip disc. But then the CD kind of folds out into like a normal digipack, but it's just oddly shaped. Um, this was not my favorite release. Uh, it felt like it was kind of disjointed. Um, kind of the same uh, type of music and everything. It just felt disjointed and um, I don't know. It, di it didn't do much for me. Um, the artwork's really cool. It kind of folds out into this digipack. You go from top to bottom. It's got some great artwork there, again, is the, the band. Um, just not my favorite release. I don't know why. Maybe I need to explore it again. Um, like I said, it came out, what I say, 2016. Uh, I may have to explore it again. Uh, I like the artwork and everything, kind of the Asian feel to it. Um, but, yeah, not my favorite release by any means. Um, Spiritual Instinct came out in last year well not last year now 2019 um, and I never did um, pick that one up so I may explore that and see if it's it's worth digging up um, next up we have we're going back to black metal um, Al try to how about that Algeon I think is how you pronounce it um, this is Vox Clematis uh, this came out in 2016 I believe if my, oh no, not 2016, 1996. I got that mixed up with another uh, release on my notes. Um, this came out on Wounded Love Records. Now this is an original pressing, CD pressing. I'm surprised a lot more people don't talk about this band. Uh, granted, they haven't put anything out for 10 years. Um, but this is an original pressing CD. Um, you can get this on Discogs for... I don't know, four or five bucks. I think that's where I got it. Um, it's only like four songs, but every song is great, great, solid. Um, just heavy, thick black metal. Um, the production's great. Songs are great. Um, I never got much into the lyrics. Um, this is kind of a beat-up copy, but um, if you like black metal and you like it heavy and filthy and nasty, um, but the sh songs are... are uh, short and to the point uh, you can't really go wrong with this band I don't know much about any of their full lengths or any other releases um, by them so I will have to check them out um, I bought this a couple years ago and loved it but it was only four songs I didn't have Spotify at the time and just kind of didn't think about it anymore now I am so I may have to start doing some digging on the band Algeon uh, a couple more releases here. Really switching gears here. <laughs> um, big time. Um, this is the... I think this might be the debut release by uh, Jesse, Jesse Alexander. She goes by Jesse Lee Alexander. Um, this is called Decatur County Red. Um, and as you can see here on the um, cover, she... I think I ordered this from her website. She's an independent artist. Um, and she signed it on the front, which was uh, pretty cool. And this is just a simple, simple, digi, uh, kind of like not a dig pack, like a folder or like a, a wallet. I think they call this. Um, she's written songs for people like uh, Patty Loveless, Trish Yearwood, Little Big Town, blah blah blah. 
and I've talked about this release before, I think, but a lot of these people cut their teeth, especially in Nashville, writing songs for other people. Uh, they get paid, you know, every time the song is played or an album is sold that's on there. Um, and this is just good um, country music, if you like standard country music. Um, you would, you'll probably like this. Um, she wrote a couple really cheesy songs for people like um, like Lee Bryce and um, Blake Shelton, but I don't fault her for that. Sometimes these people write songs and they don't they work for a um, company that farms out their songs. And if Blake Shelton wants to write your song or sing your song, um, you don't really get to sing no. Um, and if your goal is to make money and write songs, um, she she has been doing it. She. Th- thought finally 2004 uh, she's gonna start her own career it looks like this one came out in 2020 um, she had an album in 2005 called honeysuckle sweet and one in 2014 called down home so she hasn't been very active um, but these are just it looks like seven or eight just good solid um, country songs i'll put a link um, down below if you want some uh, kind of heartbreakish female country vocals with um, some kind of uppity songs, some regret songs. You can't have a country album without regret. You know, I should probably go now. My problem is you. Um, Lonely out of me. You you get the idea. Good stuff, though. Um, Last but definitely not least is an album I talked about, I want to say, in one of my earliest videos. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but if you don't know this album in particular, um, I highly recommend picking it up. This is Algazanth. Uh, this is the Three-Faced Pilgrim, which came out on Woodcut Records in 2013. It's very white, so it's hard to see. Um, I remember talking about the yin and the yang, the white and the black. I don't I call it a goose. It's probably not a goose, but... Um, there's the insides. But the song, In Your Midnight Orchard, the beginning riff of that song, I actually, out of the blue, ironically enough, I was humming that riff, um, I want to say two weeks ago, and I had no fucking idea what album it was from. I knew it was black metal. Uh, I couldn't place it. And then as I started going through my collection and stuff I wanted to talk about, this one came up, and immediately the, the opening riff of the album popped into my head. And uh, finally figured out what the hell that was, and it's been driving me nuts. Uh, inside, pretty basic, just some lyrics and whatnot. Um, this guy, this is a, a five-piece band. This one came out in 2013. Um, Eight Coffin Nails came out a few years later, or maybe even uh, four to five years later. I have not checked that out, but they have a whole catalog of music dating back to the the mid to late 90s that I have not checked out and I remember when I made this video I said I'm gonna go back and check out their catalog and I have not done that yet um, now that I have Spotify um, some of these bands are on Spotify some of them aren't but it does help me listen to stuff and then decide if I want to go buy the physical uh, product or not so um, but if everything's as good as this I remember this album getting a lot of praise in, in 2013 but I didn't actually get my fingers on a copy until this year. Um, Very, very happy to own this in my collection. Highly recommend it. Uh, So that's it for my CD update. Got us up to Algazoth. Next up, we're going to be getting into some uh, grunge. Uh, If you know that if I'm in the ALs and you're a grunge fan, you probably know what band's coming next. I'm amongst some other stuff, so... Uh, thanks for checking out the channel, everybody. Um, hope you all had a half uh, safe and happy new year. Um, and again, please like and subscribe if you if you would. Um, need to get more more involved in this uh, music community on YouTube. So thanks for checking out the channel. Hope you have a good one, and I will catch you all very soon. Later.